This is an inexpensive chuck off of a Delta drill press. This is uh, what this video is about and um, disassembling these these chucks. So we're just going to get right to it and then we'll talk about it a whole bunch. So we have ear protection. This is a bolt, not particularly anything special. We'll talk about that a little bit more. We're going to open this up, really just enough so that that drops down. And then hammer. Now, so I'm holding it to allow this portion to fall out. So you can see that this is sort of coming off here. This is an outer sleeve. We're going to keep hitting it a couple more times. And we got it out. Initially I wanted to start this video um, with this thing open to explain some of the details with it. But uh, it seems better just to show the action from the beginning. So we're going to set that down there. And we'll tell you, this is again an inexpensive chuck. This is... Um, Largely a sheet metal tube. This is not taking apart a Jacobs type chuck, which I believe this to be a clone of. You can really tell the difference of it by um, this this outer sleeve. Here is a smaller Jacobs type chuck, and we'll take this one apart. More on uh, more on those later. This is a, a more solid piece, and the uh, teeth to engage with the key are integral on the sleeve where on this one are, it's not. So you can kind of see this if you look at it up close you can see there's a ridge on this where it clamps in here. It's pretty obvious what these are so you can just hammer that out. When um, I took this apart I took this up before one of the one of the first things that's going to happen is that those are going to fall off and it might freak you out a little bit. Um, that's intentional and you can see that these fit together perfectly and there's notches in here so that it encourages a break along there. If this um, did, was not broken you would not be able to install this either over either from the hey get back here either from the top or from the back you wouldn't be able to slide it in so that this is broken and then it can fit over the jaws and engage in their and their threads and that whole thing more of the story is that's going to be okay so the first thing that uh, I did when I took this apart was to mark these jaws, both in their orientation and um, well, yeah, just their orient, their whole orientation. So these have been marked. We'll, just, we'll drop that one out. This one I've, I've cut. I just took a little grinder and cut two notches in there, and then I cut two notches. You can see that pretty clearly, actually, right there. Um, this one has nothing on it, and this one should have a single cut across it, excuse me, there's my notch right there so that I can get these both um, these need to be both like we're going to call this you know one, two and three they need to be oriented the same because the, um, the threads on the back here are different and if you get that messed up this is not going to, this is going to, it's going to close, the, the teeth are going to close up strangely, the jaws are going to close up strangely on this. So I marked those. Uh, another thing to notice is that these these come out from the top. It looks like it, it looks like they might fit out the back here a little bit and it's very close 
but really if you if you crank on it it's not going to be good so they come out and they come in from the top this one's a little gritchy we're going to be cleaning it out and that's possibly the reason that uh, you'd be taking it apart so we'll put this back together again uh, again we're watching how i've done the notches on here I've got, that's two, this is nothing, and the last one is one. So as you can see, these are kind of all over the place. And what we want to do is we want to have all these jaws at the same level before we put the, the ring on that the key engages into. So again, we can see that, and then I'll just, this is, these are, these are, these are all at the same level for the most part. And we're going to check that again. Another thing that's going to happen with these is that the, the jaws will actually rotate in here. This is a good one. So the, these, these will rotate in here, and they need to be, they need to be uh, flat so that we can engage this. That, that'll they'll orient themselves somewhat when you put the ring on, um, but it's nice to start from a, a decent spot, as we might need to do this a second time. So I'm just going to set this on here, and then we'll set this one over the top. So as you can as you can see here some of my teeth are not set up so I'm going to just push them out a little bit so that they're at the same level because that's what we want so oh look at that that's a big gap it's because it's not in the teeth yet and we're just going to give this a spin and it'll drop in so this is dropped in here real nice and we're going to show you that these teeth all come together. If I had done this wrong, uh, one of these jaws, or these jaws would be at different levels, which is not what you want. So another important point with this is to um, get the base of the jaws out of the way when you put this thing back on or when you take it off because there's limited clearance on here and you're going to bonk the, the uh, lower face of the jaws into that. So if we come down pretty extremely, this is really tight and it, it's, it's going to pivot a little bit when you try and put it on and you don't want to crash into the side of this, which I've done here a couple of times. You can probably barely see it. Um, that becomes getting the jaws out of the way becomes a lot more important with this where this is a much more substantial this has a much more substantial ring in relation so what we're going to do here is we're just going to put this on here gently just to kind of hold things together and we'll get this this is just a metal a metal ring of nothingness which um, you could use anything you got this is going to be a lot better than using sockets. Uh, let's, let's just check this to make sure I got these in because I want these in. So we want to come in with this as much as we can, but we don't want the jaws sticking out because if we're hammering on the jaws, the jaws are going to be um, hammering on the threaded surface here and not on this surface. So we're going to close this as much as possible or excuse me, we're going to open this as much as possible. No, no, I'm sorry. We're going to close this as much as possible to allow the bolt to go in. And again, this bolt is just something I had laying around. I want it to be loose enough so that I'm not impacting the jaws with it. This bolt could be shorter. Again, just what I had laying around. Look, hearing protection. 
because this process is kind of loud. And hopefully you can see this thing coming down. And we'll just kind of rotate it because it's not going to come down straight. Watching our fingers. Okay, so we'll show you this a little closer here so you can see that this is not on yet, but it is square. It is square, and again, we're not we're not impacting the jaws on this because that would really tear the teeth up inside there. So now we can really hammer the crap out of this. Thing. So you can see it's still not there yet, but it is still square. I've got just a little bit more on that. Bigger hammer would be okay. And heating this outer um, this outer sleeve up would probably make this process a little bit easier. But we didn't do that. That is not all the way down, which I'm going to be okay with um, for now, certainly. The thing is, is that this is still spinning freely. I haven't mashed up. I haven't mashed up my jaws on this, and you know, really, one of the bigger purposes of this outer sleeve is to keep dirt from getting out of here, and to keep this ring together. Now, if you remember, we showed you the split ring. This is from a smaller chuck. This needs to be held together by something, and it's being held together by this outer sleeve. And if I had not hammered this all the way down, it still would have held that sleeve together, which is uh, totally cool. This thing, this thing is still a little gritchy. Um, I'll probably be taking this apart again. But yeah, so again, this came off a, a DeWalt, um, yes, it was a DeWalt drill press, which this is an inexpensive chuck. Forgot to mention at the beginning, this chuck is at time of shooting this between eight and $10 new. So if you're having problems with these, you could take it apart. Maybe you could just buy a new one um, or the whatever. This, this again is an inexpensive chuck with the sleeve on it. This is more of a Jacob style, which is uh, different, different but related, and is not going to is not going to work out well with the hammer thing. What I did to take this smaller one apart was to use a gear puller, which uh, grabbed this. which pretty much grab come on, uh, grab the tail end of this thing and forced a socket into the top of this thing to push that through and that worked out okay uh, again I've, I've heard heating these up is makes things a lot easier and I would certainly heat up this sleeve before trying to use something like this on that but that's not what this is this is the inexpensive chucks that we see on some drills um, and I guess some moderately moderately priced drill presses if you got problems with it you need to take it apart or you're doing something weird like me and you need to get in there uh, I hope this video has helped. Good day.